All right, now we talked about linear functions and we said that a linear function was a function that had a constant rate of change. If a function is not linear, then it has some sort of curve to it and we can describe that curvature with a concept called concavity. We've got two types of curvature. It either bends upward or bends downward. If it bends upward like a U, we call it concave up. So just think of, you know, in order to remember these definitions, just remember U is for up, right? So, so, um, so if it, if it bends in a U shape, it's concave, concave up. If it doesn't bend upward, then it bends downward. All right. So if it's an inverted U, then it's concave down. All right. So that's how we describe the curvature of a function. And in this first example, we're going to look at the rate of change of these different types of curvatures. We've got one function that's concave up and one that's concave down. And um, we know that if the average rate of change is constant, then it's linear. If it's if the average rate of change is not constant, then it's nonlinear. So let's see what we can fi figure out from the average rate of change of these two functions. All right, so this first one is concave up, right? It's bending upward, so it's concave up. And sometimes I can, I, I'll abbreviate that as concave up with a little arrow, just because concave up <laughs> is a lot to write. So CC with an arrow upward that indicates con concave up. All right, so let's look at the average rate of change over these different intervals. So let's first of all look at the interval from 0 to 1. All right, so um, 0 to 1 is here. We could draw a line between those two points and then find the slope of that line, right? That's the average rate of change. So it looks like this is the point um, 1 comma 0 and this is the point uh, 0 comma 3. So if we calculate the average rate of change, we've got 0 minus 3 over 1 minus 0, right? So that's a negative 3. All right, so that's the average rate of change um, over that first interval. We can look at the next interval right here, right? If we draw a line, just trying to find the slope between these points, these two points. So this is 2 comma negative 1, all right? So calculate the average rate of change. We have minus 1 minus 0 all over 2 minus 1 and that gives us a negative 1. All right, so let's keep doing that. Let's look at the next next interval from 2 to 3. Okay, this looks like the point uh, 3 comma 0. All right, so if we calculate the average rate of change, we've got 0 minus a negative 1 all over um, 3 minus 2. All right, and minus a negative is positive, so this is just 1 over 1, which is 1. And then finally the last interval from 3 to 4, this looks like the point 4 comma 3. So if we calculate the average rate of change, we get 3 minus 0 over 4 minus 3. Okay, change in, change in the function over, change in y over change in x, right? Delta y over delta x. All right, so we get 3 over 1, right, which is positive 3. All right, so let's look at these values. It looks like it's going up, right? The, the, um, the average rate of change is increasing, right? These values are increasing. They're going up in value, right? Um, now, here, they're becoming is becoming less negative, right? But that's still going up. It went up by by two, right? Um, here it went up by two and here it went up by two. Okay, so it's always going up by two. Um, here it's becoming more positive, right? When it's negative and it's becoming less negative, then it's going up, it's increasing. And when it's uh, positive and it's becoming more positive, it's also increasing. So in this function, it looks like the average rate of change is increasing. So um, let's make a note of that. Um, average, average rate of change 
is increasing. Increasing. All right. All right. So that seems to be a characteristic, maybe, of a, a curve that's concave up. Its average rate of change is increasing. All right. So let's look at the other case where we've got, we know this is concave down, and I can um, abbreviate that with CC and then a little down arrow. Okay. So um, this is a concave down curve. Let's look at the average rates of change. All right. The first interval again is one to, or sorry, zero to one, right? Zero to one. This is the point um, zero comma one. And this is the point um, looks like, uh, what is that? One comma four. All right. We can calculate the average rate of change. We get four minus one over one minus zero, which gives us three. Okay. Again, let's look at the next interval. And if we, this looks like the point um, two comma five. And so if we calculate the, calculate the slope between those two points over that interval, we can find that the average rate of change is five minus four over two minus one. So that's just one over one, which is one. And the next interval, okay, so this looks like, here's 0.3 comma four. All right, that's the next interval. So um, we've got four minus five over three minus two. So that's a minus one over one, which is negative one. All right, and then the last interval from three to four, this is the point four comma one. And so the average rate of change is just gonna be four minus, or sorry, one minus four over um, four minus three. Change in y over change in x. All right, so that is a negative three, all right? All right, so let's look at these average rates of change, these average rates of change, all right? Um, what's happening? They're going down, right? They're going down, they're decreasing. Now here, it's becoming less positive. And here it's becoming um, more negative. But regardless, the average rate of change is always um, decreasing. So that's right, let's make a note of that. Average rate of change is decreasing. Okay, so if you look at the difference between the average rate of change is going down by two, down by two, down by two. So it's the average rate of change is decreasing. All right, so let's let's summarize um, our findings here and uh, generalize a little bit. So a function is concave up if its average rate of change is increasing. All right, increasing. Simple as that. If the average rate of change is increasing, then the function is concave up. All right. Now, there's a couple different cases depending on whether it's decreasing or increasing, right? Um, and sometimes it's a little bit confusing. So if the function is decreasing in concave up, right? So this looks like, and remember concave up looks like a U. So it looks like this. So this um, curve right here really corresponds to this par portion of the U, right? And so it's decreasing and concave down, right? The average rate of change is increasing, but it's already negative, so it's becoming less negative, okay? <laughs> and um, if we have an increasing function, so you can see now, let me use a different color. Um, let me, I'll just mark it in blue. For the, on the U, we're talking about this portion of the curve. If you can see that. Um, that's increasing and concave up. So um, the average rate of change is, is increasing, but the rate of change gets more positive, right? It's increasing. Either one of these cases, the average rate of change is increasing, 
okay? It's just that when it's already decreasing, it's becoming less negative. If it's already increasing, then it's becoming more, more positive. All right, now for a concave down function, the average rate of change is decreasing. Decreasing. It's becoming, um, well, it depends on um, whether it's increasing or decreasing. So if, if the, um, so regardless of whether the, the function is increasing or decreasing, if it's concave down, the average rate of change is decreasing. If the function is increasing, right, if the function itself is increasing then um, and concave down, then the average rate of change becomes less positive, okay? So, and if the function is decreasing and concave down, then the average rate of change becomes more negative, okay? So that can be a little bit confusing and maybe I made it more confusing <laughs> by pointing it out. But um, just be aware that it, 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 especially when you have decreasing functions, um, when it's decreasing and you're looking for, um, uh, you're trying to determine whether it's concave up or concave down, um, you can see that the, you know, here it's decreasing, the slope is it's becoming more steep but it's becoming more steep in the negative direction. So the, the slope is, uh, or the rate of change is actually decreasing because it's becoming more negative. Whereas when you have a decreasing function up here um, and it's concave up, right, the slope is becoming more shallow, right, but it's negative, so it's actually increasing, right? So, <laughs> all right. Um, I will meet you uh, in the next video for the next example.